Youth Devotions of the Week with Becca. And welcome back to the Youth Devotions of the Week. That is literally the catchiest song ever. I'm so proud of myself for that. I'm sorry if the lighting's not that great. It's pouring down with rain outside. So we're making do. It is early in the morning. I'm half ready. I have not done my hair. I have not put any makeup on. And I'm wearing a tracksuit. But that's okay because I know you won't judge me because Jesus wouldn't either. So, welcome back. And we are on episode two of our second series on youth devotions, which is all about how we can keep hope. For all of you, hope's gonna look a little bit different based on where you're currently at. And that's okay. It's also okay if you're not feeling like you've got much hope at the moment. I feel like in this pandemic, it's been really up and, you are right there, am I boring you? Yeah? Up and down. And there's been weeks where I'm like, this is the best thing ever working in my pyjamas. There's been weeks where I've cried because I've found pasta for the first time in weeks. And this week I found actually a little bit more difficult. Um, I'm not feeling that hopeful in terms of where things are at or where they're heading. Um, and it's about knowledge and I think that that's okay. Sometimes um, we can be in situations like the situation we're in now, where maybe we don't know how we think or we don't know how we feel about what's going on around us. And that's okay, but it's about remembering that God knows exactly how we think and feel. And sometimes if the plans that God presents us, the things going on in our life, feel a bit confusing or aren't necessarily what we would have wanted, we can feel like God's plans are against us, but that is never the case. God's intentions are always good and God wants us to experience a full spiritual growth throughout our lives, throughout the good times and the bad. He wants us to be filled with joy. He wants us to know him fully and he wants us to abound in hope. In our own power, we would never be able to reach this kind of growth. We can only attain it from working alongside and with the Holy Spirit. I was talking to one of my friends the other evening um, she's got all sorts of stuff going on in her life, illness, she's a single mum of a small child after her husband left her, uh, they met and married in a church and she's got an awful lot going on at the moment and she asked me what is one of the things that have got you through difficult times and I said to her how when there was a certain point in my life uh, just before I met Dave where things were really difficult um, there was a really tough situation going on in my life and I really didn't know how to get through it and so I committed to, and I, let's be honest I should have already been doing this, but I committed to every single morning and night I was going to read my bible. I found that it transformed my life. It didn't change my situation, it didn't make the bad stuff go away, it didn't suddenly have this like bright shining oh, light come into my life at all but what happened was it changed me it filled me with hope I was reading these stories especially in the Gospels of Jesus doing some like unbelievable things and it blew my mind and knowing that the God of Scripture was working in my life like literally blew my brains out but I was talking to my friend and she said that's interesting because when I read the pages of scripture, what I find is it disheartens me. I look at Jesus healing these people, I look at Jesus helping people walk on water, feeding the 5,000, and I think, like, why isn't that happening in my life? And I was just reminded of Dave, my husband's favourite Bible verse. Um, I'll tell you which one it is, but I don't know where it is. I think it's at the end of John's Gospels. It's definitely at the end of the Gospels. Do you know what? I'm going to Google it for you. Hmm. Ah, got it. So, the verse is John 21, verse 22. And it says, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books 
that would be written. And as I unpacked how my friend was feeling, what I realised was she wasn't doubting that God was at work in her life, but to her, it didn't feel as significant as what was happening in people's lives in the Bible. But when I pointed out that actually that verse shows us, right, that Jesus is doing so many things that it's physically impossible for them to be written down, suddenly she realised that God had been at work in her life and there may as well have been a book in the Bible called Now, it's very clear we shouldn't add to the Bible, so please don't start writing your own books in the backs of your Bibles. But I encouraged her to start journaling, starting writing herself, not as a Bible at all, but just as a record. She needed reminding of the things that Jesus was doing. Sometimes when we lost hope, it's because we've lost sight of what Jesus is doing. Matthew 7 verse 28 says, When Jesus had finished these things, the crowd were amazed at his teaching. Now, what I was going to do was read to you the build-up of what happened, what Jesus was doing that was amazing people. But my challenge for you this week is to think about that phrase. So what I want you to do, and we're not rewriting scripture, we're using scripture to help us before any of you lot start shouting at me. I'm not saying rewrite scripture, do not do that. But what I'd like you to do is I want you to write down on a piece of paper something that Jesus has done. Sometimes you've heard him, some healing you've seen, sometimes when you've been nervous and he's helped you. And then write this verse after, when Jesus had finished these things, the crowd were amazed at his teaching. Because sometimes we need to remind ourselves of who Jesus is and what he's capable of. That his plans for us are always good. And then, when we know Jesus, we're truly able to have hope. Psalm 130 verse five. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word, I put my hope. Remind yourself of who Jesus is, and then you'll find hope. See you next week for episode three. Bye. Bye. Oh. What happened to summer, man? I was loving that weather. I got burned. I'm now talking to a camera. This lockdown's really getting to me.